We start with our interview segment and talk about History is Power, a locally produced blog offering insight into the origins of some of today's top news. The blog is the work of Diane Eikhoff and Aaron Barnhart, Mr. and Mrs. Many of you will recall, as do I, Aaron's years of writing about TV and radio at the Kansas City Star. Aaron, it's a pleasure to welcome you to Ruckus. Thanks for joining us. Nice to be back with you, Mike. So uh, your blog is titled History is Power. So why is history power? Because history isn't just something that gets contained in books that we read at our leisure. History, as James Baldwin and others have said, is something we carry around with us. I think Faulkner said it's not even the past. But the idea is that if we don't know our past, we're really shortchanging ourselves in getting all that we need to understand where we came from and plan a better future Lots for us. of people think history began the day they were born. Yes. And, and often don't realize that much more took place before then. And the reason we study history is to understand the past and what the effect will be on the present and the future. We study the past to better understand the present. Talk some about your blog and how it came to be. Well, uh, as you mentioned, uh, my wife, uh, Diane Eikhoff, was the one who really got me uh, into this. When I was still at the Kansas City Star about 20 years ago, she made a pivot and uh, began studying history, and she wrote the first biography of the woman who brought the women's rights movement to Kansas. Her name was Clarinda Nichols, and I helped her edit and publish that work. That's really what got me in, and then when I quit the newspaper uh, uh, about five years ago, uh, we, I went into it full time with her. And this blog is really the outgrowth of the fact that there are more stories to tell than we could possibly write books. And so if we can just even impart uh, a little story um, uh, every day of every week, I could be doing this till I was 100 because, Mike, seriously, there is so much hidden history, so much that was left out of the books that you and I read growing up. And people can get that information on your blog at no charge. Everything is free. Yeah, yeah. Like, like any blog. I mean, I started blogging in the 1990s uh, back on television when uh, people would do a story just about somebody who, wow, look at this. He's giving away stuff on the internet. Now we're all giving it away. Uh, but uh, I, I find that uh, a lot of the people who uh, followed me back then when I was the TV and uh, media critic for the Kansas City Star um, are, are glad to reconnect with me. And in fact, Part of this mission is to cover the best new films, TV shows, and documentaries that help fill in some of the gaps of the history we didn't get. On your blog right now is a story about late night television, and you and I used to talk a lot about uh, late night television, Johnny Carson, and all the others while you were at the Star and I was on radio. Let's talk about a couple of the items on your blog right now. One deals with Black History Month, which of course February is. And you say Kansas City is a site where there is a lot of black yeah. history. Yeah, uh, black history is uh, one of those parts of American history that we, we, we as uh, the establishment, let's put it that way, for many years, uh, almost all major history posts were, were held by whites. Uh, the National Park Service, which is where a lot of the uh, charged with a lot of the historical preservation, used to have segregation policies. So we're doing a lot of catching up here. But Kansas City and this entire Missouri-Kansas border region, I'm happy to say, has some of the best interpreted black history sites, whether it's uh, Brown versus Board of Education in Topeka, uh, the George Washington Carver site uh, down by Joplin, uh, or even here in, in Kansas City. In addition to the outstanding Mid-America Black Archives, we've got the Quindaro site. And I'm really excited about the, the symposium that my old colleague, Paul Winsky, is going to be convening in April uh, with all the major uh, stakeholders and storytellers around the Quindaro site. And let's see if we, we can't get that move forward to the, next, to the next stage of historic preservation. We're down to the last minute or so. Uh, you have a story analogizing President Andrew Jackson and the current occupant of the Absolutely. White House. Absolutely. I don't think it's any accident that the current resident of the, <coughs> of the Oval Office has right over his shoulder a portrait of our seventh president. Uh, they were both bold. Uh, they both got completely, they were both uh, never afraid to say what they said. They both had a populist appeal. And the most intriguing thing to me, Mike, is that in their first year 
of office, they were completely consumed by chaos, and chaos surrounding specifically a scandal involving a woman of uh, uh, ill repute. And these were the kinds of things, I, I wouldn't say that the women who are accusing the current president are necessarily women of ill repute. I would say that the, the, the sex scandal and the chaos and the ability to overwhelm the president, uh, very much like what happened in the first year of Andrew Jackson's terms, and guess what? He righted his ship, uh, went on to win a second term, closed down the Bank of the United States, and moved all the Indians uh, I was west. going to say, and Jackson won a second term. Yes. Very quickly, if somebody wants to see your blog, how do they do that? They go to historyispower.blog, and uh, there uh, they can read the articles and, and sign up for the newsletter, and I'll, and I'll send them a guide of uh, good history films. Aaron, thanks very much. Thanks for coming Thank in. Thank you, Mike. Uh, best regards to Diane. Tell her I said hi. I'll pass it along. All right, that is the creator of History is Power, Aaron Barnhart. Now let's meet the panel and start a ruckus.